Okay, finish. Thank you. Ah. 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 Guys, open your camera ya. Please, please. Oke, okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the Fantastic Friday event, the virtual free trip with me, Mr. Wira, as the master of ceremony. First of all, on behalf of the principal, I would like to say thank you very much to Mr. Fikri Kurniawan SPD for your time and willingness to participate in this event. Okay, Mr. Fikri, are you here now? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Okay, good morning, Mr. Fikri. How are good you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Mr. Fikri. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, thank you. It's been a long time not to see you, Mr. Fikri. <laughs> already 10 years, I'm not mistaken, right? I think so. Like ages ago, I left Bandar Lampung. I went to Jakarta, Bandung, and then I moved here. Yeah. Wow. It's been a long time. Okay. Without further ado, uh, guys, let's uh, listen to, uh, let's join our Sydney tour with Mr. Fikri as the speaker. Okay, Mr. Fikri, Mr. Fikri, floor is yours. Where's the applause, guys? Applause. Give applause, guys. <laughs> I think it's because it's like so early morning there in Bandar Lampung, yeah? So, yeah, welcome to the virtual trip um, about Sydney. Um, before we start talking about lots of things, I think it's better to watch a video. Hopefully, the video will wake you up. And, yeah, I think, I hope you feel like refreshed as soon as possible. So, Mr. Wira, shall we start with the video? All right. Let's watch the video first, guys, and try to uh, identify every place in detail. Perched on the east coast of Australia, few cities are as geographically spectacular as Sydney, the capital of the state of New South Wales and home to over four and a half million people. Surrounded by the rolling Pacific Ocean, two dramatic headlands stand as a timeless gateway to one of the world's most beautiful harbours. Blessed with over 100 beaches, bathed in year-round sunshine and buzzing with a youthful vitality, when it comes to the good life, Sydney is hard to top. Sydney's heart is the harbour. What began as a penal colony in 1788 would within a century be transformed into paradise. From its rough and tumble beginnings in an area known as the Rocks, Sydney soon threw off its convict shackles and blossomed into a gracious city, filled with Victorian architecture and public gardens. New arrivals came by the boatload in search of a new life. The city expanded into gorgeous inner city suburbs like Paddington, harbour neighbourhoods like Rose Bay, and into beachside communities up and down the coast. For first timers, Sydney can feel like a maze of beaches, headlands, bays and coves. The quickest way to find your bearings is to take a trip to the top of Sydney Tower. 
From over 800 feet up, the observation deck offers 360 degree views of the entire city. Once you've come to grips with the layout of the city, head to Circular Quay, Sydney's version of Grand Central Station. From Circular Quay, you can get just about anywhere by ferry, water taxi or train. Just to the right, like white sails billowing in the breeze, is the Sydney Opera House. You don't need a ticket or tuxedo to explore this incredible performance venue. Whichever way you look, inside or outside, up or down, the Opera House is nothing less than an architectural miracle. Just behind the Opera House, on the site of Sydney's first farm, are the Royal Botanic Gardens and the Sydney Domain. Here you'll find Government House, the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and some of the leafiest views in Sydney. To the left of Circular Quay stands the famous coat hanger, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. One of Sydney's famous sons, Paul Hogan, the star of Crocodile Dundee, was a painter on the bridge before he hit the big time. But you don't need to work on the bridge to enjoy the views from the top. Simply strap on a safety harness and join a bridge climb tour. Just across the bridge at Luna Park, you'll find Sydney's most famous smile. The rides are a little on the vintage side, but the locals wouldn't have it any other way. This heritage listed fun park has been thrilling Aussie families since 1935. Just a short ferry ride from Luna Park is Darling Harbour, one of Sydney's urban renewal triumphs. Once the site of rusting railway yards, Darling Harbour is now home to the National Maritime Museum and popular parks, bars and restaurants. Only a few blocks away, you'll find the Powerhouse Museum, a celebration of steam, space and science. A short walk across the Piermont Bridge is the Sydney Sea Life Aquarium, where you'll experience many of Australia's maritime environments, from the Great Barrier Reef to the rugged south coast. Australia has a reputation as a land of creatures that bite, sting and can even rip off your whole arm. At the Wildlife Sydney Nature Park, say good day to some of the world's deadliest creatures, as well as some of Australia's most cuddly. But for the zoo with the view, hop back on the ferry and cruise over to Taronga Zoo. Ride the cable car to the top of the hill and follow the paths back down, past some of the happiest and most relaxed looking creatures you'll ever see. And who wouldn't be with views like this? When it's time to cool off, grab your towel and head to Bondi Beach. You haven't experienced Sydney until you've felt Bondi's golden sand between your toes. The beach is patrolled year round by bronzed Aussie lifesavers, but always remember to swim between the flags. Another famous seaside suburb not to be missed is Manly. The 30 minute ferry ride from Circular Quay to Manly Wharf is all part of the adventure. Go for a dip in the gentle harbourside waters of Manly Cove or head through the historic Corso to Manly Beach. If you've never tried surfing, pack your board shorts. This is the place to learn. Feeling energetic? Hike the coastal paths and bush tracks to North Head for some incredible views back to the city. So, you've climbed the bridge, tackled some Bondi waves and wrangled the wildlife. No doubt you're feeling a little thirsty. Time to partake in one of the great Sydney traditions. Join the locals by the water, raise your ice cold beer and make a toast to paradise.
All right, that was a fantastic video of Sydney, uh, the beauty of Sydney, guys. What do you think, <laughs> Mr. Pickery? It so, was really yeah, incredible that's, to that's, see the that beauty. That video, of... I got. That's not my, um, you know, my personal documentation, because at the moment here in Sydney, even here, we have a total lockdown. It started from middle of July until now, and I heard the recent news that it will be extended until 10th of September. So we are under the same situation, but hopefully you guys are feeling okay. Um, before we start with everything, my first question is, have you ever been to Australia, everyone? everyone. Have you ever been to Australia? Anybody who has ever been to Australia? No, but I have a friend from Australia. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. And I will, and I will okay. Gila. <laughs> Even what about dream? <laughs> have you ever had any dream that you um yeah, go to Australia? I, I have dream yeah. to yeah. visiting Amazing. Australia. Australia is the place good. Great. It's a good place to great. great. Hopefully after pandemic <laughs> we can go there. Yeah, hopefully after the pandemic, into uh, Australia opened the international border, and then you guys can uh, manage to have a trip here. Well, ages ago, ages ago, when I still lived in Metro, I was born in Metro. Have you ever have you ever heard Metro, guys? It's only about like an hour from Bandar Lampung. You know, Metro is the only city that has uh, still a red zone. You know, Mr. Fikri. <laughs> I kept telling my mom and my sister, um, you know, to stay safe. Okay, yeah. Ages ago, I started from dreaming. But now here I am. So, shall we start with the slides, Ms. Awira? All right. This one. Ms. B. Yep, that's a little bit about me, everyone. Just a little bit about me. A person who was born in Metro in Lampung province, but now studying here in Sydney, Australia. I'm studying fashion design at TAFE, New South Wales, and I'm working as well here as a vocational education trainer, teaching at Sydney International Business College. And I live in New South Wales. I love this place. I love it very much. Things that I don't really like is the weather, the season, especially nowadays we have winter. I hate it a lot. I miss the heat from Banda Lampung. It was awesome. And I don't really, I don't really list what I have achieved so far in my life because I don't know, I just enjoy this life. But last, um, things that I always remember was the moment the first time I came here to Australia, it was in 2009, I was chosen by the government from Lampung government to be one of youth ambassador um, at Australia Indonesia Youth Exchange Program. It was very memorable. Hopefully later on, you guys can be one of the ambassador in the future. Okay, next Mr. Wira. When we are talking about Australia, what comes to your mind? Students, what comes to your mind? Kangaroo. Yes, kangaroo. What else? Saya, saya. Kangaroo. Uh -huh. uh, kebalik, terbalik. Soalnya Australia itu kan infamous for one thing. It's an upside down country. <laughs> okay, upside down country. What else? Wow. Crazy white life. Crazy white life. Oh my God. Thank you for giving that ideas. Crazy white life. Oh my God. Yes. Snakes, I, I crocodiles. First, uh, like they, ex they explain how crazy Australian white life is. And like in the gardens, there's like so many like spider webs. <laughs> Absolutely true. 
ages ago when I came here in Australia for a holiday, work and holiday. So I went for a holiday, but to, you know, to help myself, I worked as well. I work at the farm and I met lots of snakes and it's so, it's so crazy. And talking about Australia, Australia is different from Indonesia. If it's Indonesia, we have lots of provinces, okay? Lampung and then Jawa Barat, so on and so on. But here in Australia, we have what we call states. As you can see in the picture, we have Western Australia and then we have, oh my God, it's not really clear. New South Wales, South Australia, Northern Territory, Tasmania, and others, and with the capital as well. So as I am living in New, in New South Wales, the capital is Sydney. From Australia, many people know um, this big city, Sydney, Melbourne. Next, Mr. Rira. Okay, unfortunately for us Indonesian, if you want to come to Australia, one of the entry requirement is visa. Well, we are Indonesia, we are the member of ASEAN country, right? So if you want to go to Malaysia, for example, Singapore, we just need to bring our, our passport. Where's my passport? I was planning to show my passport, but I forgot, sorry. But here, Indonesian, if you want to come to Australia, we need what we call visa. Visa is a permission for a non-citizen to enter, transit, or remain in a particular country. So we can't just come here. We need to apply for the visa first. And if the government say, yeah, you can come in, welcome, then we can come to Australia. If you don't have the visa, we cannot come to Australia. Next, Ms. Arira. Yeah, today we are focusing about Sydney. Talking about Sydney, and then you have watched the video, you saw lots of places, beaches, Sydney Opera House, gardens, zoo, lots of things there, okay? But to go around in Sydney, we have public transportation, and this is what I love about Sydney, a very reliable public transportation. Next, Ms. Arira. When we are talking about public transportation, guys, in Bandar Lampung, um, is the central Rajabasa station? What else? Rajabasa, and do we have any other big station in Bandar Lampung? I know, I know maybe. Labuan Ratu and Tanjung Karang. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here in Sydney, we have what we call central station. If you see on the left side, that is the inside of central station. It's really huge. So trains, buses, light rail, and then I think metro as well. Come to central station. Next. So to go around in Sydney, we have what we call metro. It's the name of the public transportation. I haven't tried it yet because I think um, it's released in 2020, 2020 or 2021, but it's not in my area. So I didn't really have chance to try it. We have Metro next. We have train. The train is very comfortable, especially the new train. The old one is just okay but the new one is really, really cozy. We have metro, train, next. Buses, but unfortunately, it's not my favorite. I hate bus very much because, well, I have a motion sickness, like really bad motion sickness, so I don't really like bus. And taking bus, it means I need to remember, I need to know where I need to stop because the bus, doesn't stop like anywhere we want. That's the problem. Next. And we have ferry. How many times I've tried this ferry? If I'm mistaken, I've tried it for like two or three times. We have ferry as well here as public transportation. Next. 
And we have light rail. It looks like train and metro, but it's smaller and it goes to the middle of the city center. So it's really convenient if you want to go around, but we are tired so we can take light rail. Next. And this is the card that we use when we use public transportation. We call it Opal card. We just need to recharge and then we tap the card and we are good. What about in Bandar Lampung? Students, what do we use? Uh, in Bandar Lampung, there is a toll road. Uh, kalau bahasa Indonesia, nya jalan tol, pakai kartu mm -hmm. tol. Ito. Mm -hmm. What about um, um, what trans is the name Trans Lampung in Bandar Lampung? The bus? Is that the name Trans Lampung? Yes, Trans Lampung. How, how do we pay? If I'm mistaken, ages ago, I still like pay with cash yeah, when I was in Bandar Lampung. What about now? But I Everyone? think there's no more Trans Lampung, you know. Oh my god, okay. Are extinct? <laughs> I missed lots of stories then. Okay, thank you. Next. Okay, what about recommended place? We have watched the video and there are lots of places mentioned there. So what about the recommended one? Well, to be honest, if you, for example, if you don't have like lots of time in Sydney, I recommend you to come to Circular Key. Why? Because it's a very famous tourist spot here. And we can, you know, we can come to lots of sites here, lots of places in circular key. Next. For example, you have a day trip and then you don't really want to go far away. You just want to come to one area, but you still can enjoy lots of things. So come to circular key when you expect or circular key, you can come to Museum of Art, of Contemporary Art Australia. It's one of my favorite place because I'm studying fashion design. I can get lots of inspiration from this place, from paintings, sculptures, art exhibits, okay? It's very beautiful and they um, change the show regularly. So, at one time you come, you, you see like um, this, like some particular paintings. Next time you come, it will be different one. And yeah, it, the museum is open every day except December 25th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. I don't really remember during this pandemic, but last time I went there it was about like several weeks ago when I had a project from school. Next. Okay, here we go. This is the most iconic landmark in Sydney. This is Sydney Opera House. In Indonesia, in Jakarta, we have Monas, but here we have Sydney Opera House. What about in Bandar Lampung, everyone? Students, uh, do you have any iconic landmark in, in Lampung? In Lampung, what? Sigur Tower. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pura. Yes, I went there once. I went there once, like ages ago. It was nothing inside the that building. What about now? Not too sure. I never. I only like saw the tower, not actually like go inside of it. So I don't know about about that. Okay, okay. Maybe next time. Maybe next time, if you guys feeling like want to see what's inside, I can next, Mister Rira. And yeah, Royal Botanic Garden. So if you come to Circular Key area, you, let's say you have a day, you can come to museum and then you go to Opera House and then you move to Royal Botanic Gardens. It's, um, it's a landscape with lots of plants there. It's beautiful. People, lots of people come to relax there for a picnic you know, and just start seeing to see lots of beautiful flowers there. And do we have any like a huge garden in Lampung? Do you know any students? Do we have any like a big garden in Lampung? 
Maybe lembah Maybe hijau. Bandung, Under, lembah hijau? <laughs> yeah. Lembah okay. hijau. Yes, lembah hijau. <laughs> Okay, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe lembah hijau. Okay. Um, apart from, okay, let's say you come to Australia as a tourist, you enjoy lots of places, but there's another thing, like reason why people come to Australia, come to Sydney. That is for education. Next, Miss Avira. Okay, for education. I think it's, it's kind of like very interesting information for you, everyone. So let's say you finish your high school and then you are thinking about studying abroad. Maybe Sydney is one of the, um, one of the option. So in Sydney, we have lots of universities and then um, vocational course. Like for example, Australian Catholic University, Macquarie University, University of New South Wales, University of Sydney. University of Technology Sydney, Western Sydney University, and TAFE New South Wales. So those are the names. If you are really interested, later on maybe you can um, visit the website, find out what they offer, for example. Talking about education, I am studying at TAFE New South Wales. Next. Talking about New South Wales, I love the library very much. It's very comfortable, free printing, the Wi-Fi is really good, and it's very convenient. And yeah, that's TAFE New South Wales. And the reason why I decided to study at TAFE New South Wales, especially for fashion design, it's because there are lots of fashion designers out there they studied at TAFE and it inspiring me. And I feel like it's a great place for me to study. So when you are like having a dream to study abroad, you can start finding out like which university will be um, beneficial for you. Next, I put the reasons why study at TAFE New South Wales, okay? The website, if you come to um, the TAFE New South Wales website, you will find six top reasons why to study there. Um, well, I don't get paid to promote this, but I feel like, let's say you want to study fashion design as well. I think it's a good choice for you. Here, there are, so, uh, there are six top reasons to study your degree with TAFE New South Wales. They have like 80% student satisfaction, gain experience, personal unrecognition, make connection, study on your term. But talking about study on your term, we need to have further research for international students because I'm not sure how um, it is applied for international students. One of the great things is make connection because let's say if you want to study fashion design, this TAFE New South Wales is Awesome. It's the oldest fashion design school here in Australia. Next. Okay, study in Australia. Well, if you have a dream to visit Australia for a holiday, that's great. So what if you are in love with Australia, you are in love with Sydney, and you have a dream you want to study in Sydney? But how, how? One of the cheapest way to study in, in Australia is to get scholarship. Scholarship for international students, um, the universities, excuse me, the universities, they offer lots of scholarship for international students. I've put the link there, but we are not going to discuss it today. If you are interested in looking for lots of information, you can ask your teacher um, for the link, and then you can, you know, read about all the information there. It is very good if you find it by yourself, so it's very personal for you. You can contact the school, for example, asking how to get a scholarship as an international student. Current situation, it's so challenging, especially with this pandemic, okay? 
because the border is still closed. But if you want to start finding out all the information now, I think it's a good idea. So everyone, students, who has a dream to study abroad? Who? I can't see you, but maybe if you speak up, that would be great. Who has a dream to study abroad here? Anyone? Me. Me. Oh, yeah, Arif. Hey, okay. what's your name? Say out loud, what's your name? Um, oh my god, I can't really hear it clearly. Sorry. Sorry, what's your name again? Uh, my name is Kia. Arif Lutfi and Kia. Okay, Arif Lutfi and Kia. Okay, great. So yeah, you can start finding out. What do you want to study? Uh, Kia, maybe Kia, what do you want to study, Kia? I want to study psychology. Awesome, psychology. Who else? Arif, did you mention Mr. Wira? What about others? What do you want to study? Maybe still confused? Okay, so if you're not really sure, you can take your time because it's not really easy to find a passion. So, um, Mr. Rira, can you Ooh, please have a share the connection? Oh, okay. No wonder it's kind of like, is it my connection or yours? Mine. My... Okay. okay, yes. If you want to study in Australia, you can apply for a scholarship, but um, sometimes it's very challenging applying scholarship because scholarship is offered to anyone, but it's limited people who can get the scholarship. So apart from scholarship, what can we do? The other option is fund the education by yourself. If your family able to support you, you can go. Okay, so apply as an international student. Your family can support you. So in that case, for example, you apply from Indonesia and then you are accepted to come to Australia, don't worry. When you are in Australia, you can apply for a scholarship, you can work part-time as well. That's what I am doing. What I did, what I'm doing. So studying here in Australia, I don't get any scholarship. No. Did my family support me? Mm, no, because we, we couldn't afford it. We can't afford it. I'm not coming from like a very rich family, no. So I'm working hard here and then study hard as well. The first one to fund education by yourself, you can start, for example, applying, uh, apply for, applying for as an international student from Indonesia, or you can come here for a holiday through work and holiday visa. So you can come here for a holiday and work as well, because with this visa, with this um, permission, you are allowed to work, you can save some money, and after that, you apply for a school here to study. It's very, what I can say, it's very um, interesting. That's what I did. I work here in many places to save money, and after that, I study here. Next, about work and holiday visa. Yes, it is very famous nowadays in Indonesia. I have lots of Indonesian friends here coming to Australia with work and holiday visa. So they go for holiday here and then work 
And after that, after they save money, they study here. So it's very possible, even though, for example, like people don't get scholarship and then the family can't really support because study here in Australia is so pricey, expensive. But don't worry, you still have lots of ways. Next. So I mentioned that when you come to Australia, study here in Australia, you can work part time. You can work at farm, you can work at cafe, restaurant, as, job, as a fruit picker, sushi maker, kitchen staff, waiter, or for example, um, you study at university and then, and then you are really good at math. For example, you're really good at a specific subjects. You can be a tutor. You can teach specific subject to children here. It's possible. Next. Talking about work at farm, cafe, or restaurant, those are the pictures, how it looks like. Working at farm is very challenging because we need to have like a we need to have like a fit body. I have worked at farm once at a sandalwood farm or kebun cendana, and it's really, really tough. Even we have the crocodile farm here. Well, it's a nightmare and I will never try it because it's so scary. Talking about part-time work, we have also next, Look, people work at a cafe, chat time, restaurant. It's, it's so common here in Australia for students to work. Students at university, even high school, it's very common. Back then, when I worked as a manager in a bakery, I had one staff. She was a high school student, so after school, she came to the factory to work. What about now? Students, do you have any part-time work that you do? Do you have any part-time work that you do? Anyone? Anyone? Maybe YouTuber <laughs> can be. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you earn money from that, anyone? No part-time job? Okay, yes, next. And recent news, what happens here in Australia? So yes, during this pandemic, we have lockdown in New South Wales. What about in other states? Some other states, they have lockdown as well, but some other states, they have um, is restriction. So some of them, they still can go out freely. But here in New South Wales, um, no, we can't. And during this COVID-19, luckily, finally, international students are eligible to get a government help. So um, it's very nice. Like there are lots of students here got help from the government. They got money from the government here, which is nice. Can you imagine if you study abroad, no parents, you know, no relatives, you are by yourself. And then the government here will still take care of you as well. And for international students, the good news, um, students may be able to return to Australia if they have been nominated by their education institution under an approved international student's arrival plan. So that's the further information. Now, yes, it's so hard to come to Australia because the border is still closed, but Hopefully we have lots of good news soon. So if you are planning to come here to study or just to go for a holiday for vacation, hopefully um, the border will open soon. So you can come here. Do we still have more slides, Mr. Wira? Finish. No, okay. That's all about Australia, places that you can visit for a holiday, even a little bit about education and how um, the way if you want to study here in Australia. Thank you so much, everyone.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Fikri, for your nice information and also presentation. And now we go through the question and answer session. And I would like to offer to the students to ask the question related to Sydney. Okay. Is you can ask question? anything, everyone. Everything you want. Um, can I ask something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Good sure, on. sure. Directly. Mm. What are the pros and cons in Australia? Pros and cons? Yeah. Um, um, maybe the cons so far will be um, things that will be your culture shock so far. For example, like food, weather, language, even the language, for example. Maybe that's the first things that you will encounter. Let's say um, language. Um, when I studied English back in Bandar Lampung, I was exposed with Hollywood stuff. Music from Hollywood. So the language is, is more like um, American English. But when I came here in Australia and then I moved to rural area, like in the Kampung, I was so stressed because what are you talking about, man? Are you speaking English? Like, I didn't really understand what they talked about. They have like a very specific accent. That's the con so far. But after, you know, a long time you live here, it's all nothing. You can manage your personal business using toilet. You don't have water here <laughs> in public toilet. Have yes, it's, it's, it's dry. It's dry. Like the first month, like I was so stressed. Like, how do I clean myself? Oh my God, yes. How? How? Like, God, help me. Send me anything. Like in Indonesia, we always use water for everything. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first thing that you will encounter. That's the cons. I, I brought, um, you know, bottle of water. Yeah, you bottle know? of water. <laughs> But nowadays, wow. I always bring the flushable wet tissue. I know it sounds like, ew, but that's the best that I can do. After I go home, I clean my body when I have a shower. And the pros like, oh my God, I love, I love Australia. I love Sydney. It's a very multicultural place. Like my friends, they come from Brazil, Nepal, India, China, Korea. Lots of different people here. And talking about education, for example, the pros. Oh my God, I love it. Well, I love Indonesia as well. I studied in Indonesia, but talking about education here in Australia, I'm studying fashion design. To, I study illustration, menggambar. One marker, copic marker in Indonesia, it costs like 80,000 rupiah, 80,000 ribuan, like, I don't have lots of money, man. Okay, but here in Australia, it's kind of like nothing because I work here. That's the con. Another questions, maybe? You can see from chat, Mr. Fikri, uh, from Kia. Oh my God. How, oh my God. How? It will <laughs> be embarrassing if I ask how to check. The chat message because I'm using my phone, Mr. Rira. Because okay, last okay. time I'll, I'll read it for you then. I, I, can't can't so I want to ask what is the difference between the higher education system in Indonesia and Australia, and how do college students from Australian Aussies prepare themselves on their desired work field? Okay, so what's the difference? Um, I'm talking about personal experience, okay. I'm talking about personal experience. I studied in University of Lampung before. And then here, I study at TAFE New South Wales. The difference is, I don't know. I don't really know the system. Um, mostly, it's, it's more straightforward here. From the lecturers, the docent, and then it's particularly, it's kind of like the same, like we, we are studying, but maybe the workload, the project, tugas tugasnya, here in Australia, it's like, oh my God, so stressful. 
but they have lots of great facilitation that what makes it different for example like from um from library they really encourage us to go to library and yes i love the library back in in university of lampung library was one of like meh like meh. go to you library <laughs> I don't like to go to library when I was in the University of Lampung. I don't know why. But here, I love library very much. And how they prepare for the work, it's mostly it's personal thing. Mostly it's personal thing. But what I can see here, um, the students here, they are very competitive. They are very competitive. They are really into it. That's the good things. I love to see my friends, how they are really into what they are doing. So how they prepare, they, they, they study hard, they work hard, they show it, they show their interest, they express it, that mostly what happening here, the education here. Yeah. Thank you. Is so that answering yeah, your question? The point is uh, dealing with the task and then facility yeah. and also yeah. uh, the motivation, yeah? Yeah, There's especially facility, like to be honest. Different to be honest, yeah. Okay. I hope it's uh, answering your question. Yes? Yeah, and is there another, another, question? another question from Kia, Mr. Fikri? How do college yeah. students from Australia prepare themselves on their desired work field? Their preparation. Their preparation. Um mm -hmm. One of the good things here in Australia, it's common for students to work. It's really common for students to work. So let's say in Indonesia, we study at university. We, we, we have what we call magang, okay? Mostly we have what we call magang. Uh, um, work practice, something like that. But here in Australia, before we do that, even before we do that, lots of students here, we have part-time job. So that's how mostly they prepare themselves for the work field in the future. So they, they study at university, for example, but they, have, they prepare themselves to get like a little bit experience by having a part-time work. And connection, connection is very important. So they have the part-time work. If they feel like they are into a specific field, for example, for example, uh, related to what I'm doing, for example, design, face and design. Like me, how I prepare myself, I get to know like lots of people in the design things. Contact from social media attending lots of events like seminars or fashion, fashion show, for example. So even in Indonesia, even in Indonesia, we can still do the same. Like what I did back in Bandar Lampung, the way I prepared myself when I was studying, okay, I became a private English teacher for yeah, students. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, during my study at UNILA, I worked as um, English first teacher. So back then, maybe in 2000 and I don't know, 2011 ish or 10 from 2011, 12, 13, 14. If you studied at EF yeah, English first, there's possibility you met me. That's the way we, I prepared myself. Yeah. Similar, right? I... So, Kia, the preparation is just they get the working experience before working. That's the point, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that's the, how we prepare to get a job or work field. They try to get the Even volunteer. Oh, yeah. Even not field. if, yeah, Mr. Rira, even not from part time work, even if we have like a volunteer program, mm -hmm. do it. Volunteer program, do it. That's the chance for you to know lots of people. Yeah. Like even, even now, even now, out there, lots of people doing the volunteer work, join. You will meet lots of people there. Yeah. <laughs> so 
So that's One it. Question. Yeah, just like Mr. Fikri and I did <laughs> when we were in university, we we taught. Oh, we we had been the teacher before we become the teacher. That's it. Yeah. To get the experience. <laughs> okay, it's quite. Do similar. we have more questions? Next question. Uh, from Jovi. Hello, Kak Fikri. I jo I'm Jovi, and I have a questions. Uh, when you go to somewhere in Sydney, what kind of okay? Uh, in your well, in Sydney, as we know that in Bandar Lampung, we can ride our motorcycle to go anywhere, right? What about you in Sydney? Do you ride your motorcycle or something? <laughs> well, back in Bandar Lampung, I had my motorbike and my motorbike, my motorbike was my best friend. Here, yes, we can, um, we can have motorbike, but motorbike is not something desirable here because car is very cheap here. Car mm -hmm. is everywhere and it's very cheap. So why we are driving motorbike under the sun while we can drive a car? Okay, but since um, I don't have my driver license and I can't drive, so public transportation is my best friend. So mostly I commute uh, by train here, train, buses. Public transportation is also cheap, right? Yes, and it's very reliable. And no much at much at, so it's really nice public transportation <laughs> here. So Jofi, uh, Mr. Friki uh, uh, goes uh, to their uh, college by using public transportation, you know, by bus or train. Next question from Romy. Hello, Mr. Fikri. I just wanted to ask, what is your favorite memory of living in Australia? Memorable, um, um, memorable thing in Australia, Mr. Fikri. Memorable things. When I worked at a farm, Oh, what happened? When I work at a farm, that was kind of like, that was the second time I arrived in Australia. The, the first time I was youth ambassador. So oh. I was the, the representative of our country. Okay. So I got everything that I wanted at that time. It was like, wow, nice. It was kind of like scholarship. But the second time I came here, I was just by myself. I had to work to survive. So I work at a farm, um, at a sandalwood farm, uh, kebun cendana, pohon cendana. So I did pruning, motongin batang-batang cendana. If you can see, guys, I am so skinny. Saya sangat kurus. <laughs> and at a time, I said to myself, like, God, gini amat ya cari uang ya. But it was fun. It was nice. Because... The people who work with me there, mostly Indonesians. So there were like 12 or 13 people there, sekitar 12, 13 orang. And 10 of us itu singat aku, saya um, from Indonesia. And I felt like we felt like a family. So memorable. Survive together as a family. Yes, survive <laughs> together. Friends as family, it's so nice. Oh, so nice. So that that was your unforgettable um, memory, yeah. Next question: yes. What was your high school from Ayesa Chacha? What was your high school experience like that led you to get picked by the government to study abroad in Australia? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, what was your high school experience? Uh, that lead you uh, to be picked by the government to study abroad in Australia? Okay, so I'm studying here in Australia. I pay by myself. So, but when I was chosen by the government at that time, it was when I was studying in UNILA. Okay, and when I was chosen, it's not studying in Australia, but as a youth ambassador, uh, Duta Pemuda. So what we did here, we, di we promoting our culture, and then we had a um, um, magang as well here. Mm -hmm. So Indonesia, every year, they open the open the selection to be youth ambassador. So remember guys, every year, if I'm mistaken, every March, Dinas Pemuda dan Olahraga, 
usually they will announce the selection. So every year. At that time, yes, I joined the selection when I was in Bandar Lampung. And luckily, thank God, I was chosen. And what led me, to be honest, it was an accident. Was I a naughty kid when I was at school? Yes, I was a naughty kid as well. Um, I was not good at religion subject. I was very bundled at that time. Jadi, at school, my senior offered me to study with him the masjid at a mosque. And I said like, okay. And then I came and studied reading Quran together. And from that accident, a friend of mine telling me that, hey, look, there is a um, youth exchange program selection. Why don't we join? So at first, I would just want to accompany my friend because he joined the selection. So I joined the selection as well. But fortunately, I was, I was the one who was chosen by the government. That's the story. Accidentally. Yes. <laughs> So that's why when I say if, if there is any volunteer, just come join. Say yes to good things. Yeah. We don't know what happens. Yeah, that's it. We we cannot be, we cannot refuse our destiny <laughs> if you are chosen. Yes. You will be. Yeah. <laughs> so Chacha, -cha, uh, uh, it's not about uh, being picked up by the government to to study, but to uh, to be the representative of our country to promote our country and for study he pays by himself <laughs> yes by walking hard and save and money blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you for chacha next we go to thank patan. you chacha patan hi mr fikri i have a question i heard that there was a rat plague because of extermination of cats because they are disturbing australian endemic wildlife what was uh, was that also affecting Sydney? Thank you. So rat plague. Um, mostly, if you're talking about that rat things, mostly it happens in the kind of rural area where, um, where we have lots of farms. Okay, so yes, it affects the farmers in the rural area, but, but in the Sydney, in Sydney, in the city, we, um, it's not really affect the city. But talking about rat, yes, we have rats everywhere even snakes in the city oh, in the not city. in sydney but <laughs> in canberra Canberra. yes okay but don't Thank worry it's in the mostly it's in the rural area if you come to the big city mostly you will be okay okay Thank you, uh, Mr. Fikri, for Thank you the, for the question. Lens answer, yeah. Next, we go to Nandito. Excuse me, sir. Have you ever felt racist in your new environment, like the difference between others? As we know that you are Asian, is there any racist thing? Um, luckily, I never experienced racism here mm -hmm. because we have the law here. So, uh, What's the act? What's the law? I can't really remember, but we have the law or oh, anti-discrimination. So we have the law. So, um, so that's why I feel so safe here because I'm feeling protected here. Oh. The good thing is I never have that kind of experience, but yes, out there, racism exists here. I watch even, um, especially during the, um, the beginning of the pandemic, I saw lots of racism happen to Asian people. Mm. But it's still okay. So far, yeah, it's still okay. Yeah, but you yourself never encountered no. that one. Okay. No. Nice. Luck. Thank you uh, for the question. Thank you for the question. So don't worry if you want to come to uh, for a holiday or to study here. I'm sure you will be okay. Okay, you'll be safe. Okay, we still have a few questions. Uh, they are so excited, you know. <laughs> and the next question will be from Gilang. I have another question. Are there any souvenirs you can recommend for someone who are on holiday to Australia? So recommended souvenir or gift <laughs> or kangaroo maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the questions. But <clears throat> when we are talking about souvenir, we are talking about economy, right? And most of the souvenirs when you see, for example, made in China, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so what is a complete souvenir? Um, since lots of things are made in China, which is you can get it like anywhere, maybe you mm -hmm. can get something really iconic. That's okay. Maybe it's made in China, but something maybe with um, um, with a special print like kangaroo print, and depends on what your friends like wants to have the problem is the cheap one it will be keychain but sometimes your friend like oh my god keychain no way no keychain <laughs> no keychain <laughs> happens guys. right keychain no keychain but but sometimes to our friends need to be need to be understandable as well like we are going for a holiday we are saving our money so we're not going to buy lots of things spend our money for our friends right but the other cheap things for the option is pin maybe it's another thing, pin. You can put the pin on your uniform if it's um, if your your school is okay with that. We have lots of beautiful pins like um, kangaroo, boomerang, something like that. T-shirt, yeah, but the cheap T-shirt is still made in China. The quality is not really good, and it costs like twenty dollars, which is about like duaratus ribuan. Well, if you come to H&M or Uniqlo or that kind of, you know, store, you still can get like a good quality clothes. So it depends on you. If you have lots of money to spend for your friends, you can buy fancy stuff. Otherwise, you can just buy them pin, keychain. Okay, keychain. You yeah. <laughs> keychain, the, the, the chip. The chip Gantungan kunci. The one. Keychain. Yeah. Okay, next questions. Uh, for the next question after this, uh, please ask directly uh, so we can record your performance. Don't use. Oh chat. my God, yes. Why don't you guys ask me directly yeah. instead of Mr. We were reading. Uh, the last one for chat, yeah, from chat. Uh, hello, Mr. I have a question for you. Student at Australian Learning Indonesian, some university that you're opening later. Okay, uh, the question is. Do we have many many Australian students who learn Indonesian, Indonesian literature, or Indonesian or Bahasa? Many Australian learn Bahasa? This is one of the most interesting facts about Australia, okay? And thank you for the questions. Back then in 2009, the first time I came here in Australia, Bahasa Indonesia in Western Australia, in Perth, Bahasa Indonesia Ivan Musikan was kind of like the biggest, it like top five language that students learn. even. They put it in the, um, they make Bahasa Indonesia as one of option for students to study at school, in high school. So yeah, there are lots of um, bule, bule, you know? <laughs> no, sometimes they don't really like to be called as bule. I mean, yeah, there are lots good. of Australians here, they learn Bahasa Indonesia. And I have a very best friends who live all over Indonesia who can speak Bahasa Indonesia very well even they become bahasa indonesian teacher at school wow that's cool so the answer is many yeah many australian study bahasa okay next question please deliver directly to the speaker come on ask me One directly two. guys that's okay on, guys anybody or the teacher maybe Maybe the teacher first as the role model. <laughs> Come on. Is there an equation? Are you are you are you students shy? <laughs> shy, embarrassed, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'm asking if you're shy. You yeah, Kia, you want to know. ask question, Kia? Yeah, can I ask you again? Okay. Yeah, Kia. So you uh, asked what in Australia? Yeah, SA2. SA2. So yes. I think I didn't process your, uh, uh, your information. I'm so sorry. So uh, what did you do in UNILA? Because UNILA is, is like, a, I think the, uh, the most, I think the nearest education, the top education in Lampung. Maybe some people dis, uh, decide not to go outside Lampung, so they decided UNILA. And you, you're uh, in, a, uh, in Australia right now, so that's uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, so I want to ask, what did you do with Mila? I, yeah. I studied English at University of Lampung. So yeah, as I, I studied together with Mr. Wira, but 
Mr. Wira, am I your senior? Yes. At Best the Lampung University. I mean, like it's only like a year apart, right? To discuss the <laughs> I mean, like I studied, I studied um English at University of Lampung. So talking about if you decide not to study abroad, that's okay. It's it's totally fine. But what matter is it will be nice. It will be nice if you study what you like. It will be very, very nice. So it means you are nice to yourself. So when you study, you enjoy it. Yeah. Thank study you, Gia, for the interest, question. Right? Hmm. That's a nice question and, question and answer from Kia and Fikri, Mr. Fikri. So if you like something, go for that, fight for that. If you yes. like, for example, English, yeah. Take your time more to study about English and focus on that. Focus on your, what you like, not um, what people want. Yeah, Mr. Rira, a yeah. little bit, little bit why I like language. Maybe most of the boys, I like playing video games. Oh, video game is my life. Video game is my life, and in video game, mostly uh, using English. That was like kind of like inspiration for me. So that's why I wanted to learn English at that time. Yeah, learning by we'll start from uh, video games. Okay, thank you. Is there any more questions? Yeah, Fayat, come on, Fayat. Um, is it is it true that time zone also available on Australia? What available? Is time zone also available in in Australia? Time zone. The time the zone. Huh? Time zone. Yes, the arcade. What time zone are we talking about, Hafiz? Uh, no, not, not not time zone, not not time zone time, but time zone like an arcade ca place. Time zone like game, you know. Time yes. zone. Oh, game. I, time zone. I, I mean, time zone about games, about yeah, game the in the mall. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I just like oh okay. That it's time like zone. Like play. It's not. Game, um, uh, not I never, way. I never really see here. I never really see here. I don't think so. I don't know. Because when we are talking about games, I play PlayStation at home, Hafiz. I have PlayStation 3, 4, and 5 here. Huh? 5? I have How PlayStation much? 3. Four. OMG. Oh my How God. Much? We must come to have his house to play together. We have PlayStation 5? <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't You're know. I don't really go out here, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, I don't know. It's obvious. <laughs> but oh god, how um, how pricey it is! Uh, <laughs> it's very expensive. PlayStation Five. Yeah, it's ob it's it's just, it's a new release. Yeah. So if I, I yeah, just pay a visit, try to <laughs> go to Australia by Angkot or Gojek. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Thank nice. You. Is there any question? Any more questions, guys? Oh my god, can I like ask another? Because I have so many, like, I want to uh, have so many questions to answer. Okay, then ask directly, Gila. Mm, just, apa, just talking about like time zone, right? About the arcade. Now, I was thinking about uh, do you like have any hobbies or something like that? Because my kind of hobbies is like I like to draw and like to read comics. And from what I know about Mr. Wira, yeah, he also likes to watch anime like me. I also like to watch anime. So, so what kind of hobby do you have like while you're a bit tech or like, bored or something like that? Yeah, I like watching anime as well. One Piece is my favorite. It's kind of like my most favorite One Piece and that kind of anime. One Piece. I like watching anime and of course playing video games. But since I am studying fashion design at the moment, I spend most of my time by designing, watching lots of um, fashion show, video, that kind of stuff. What else? Traveling. I like traveling very much. Traveling, one of my favorite time was when I went backpacking by myself when I was um, and when I was a university student in Bandar Lampung, I went to Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore by myself. Really, really by myself. I didn't have any plan. 
I didn't make any itinerary. So I just flew to Thailand and voila, let's see what I can do today. I just walked by myself. So yeah, traveling, watching anime, playing video games. Oh my God, why my hobby just like kind of like thin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean like, yeah, you well, still look well, thin, right? <laughs> well, that's what I did when I was a kid, to be honest. My parents kind of like sometimes called at me because I played video games too much. Yes, it happened. I was naughty, yes. But then I realized that that's what I like to do, but I need to make my life balance. Like I'm a student, that's my, my responsibility. So yeah, I have to study. I need to play games um, when I have a free time after I finish my, for example, project, not just playing video games all the time and then ignore yeah. my, my school, for example. We you know uh, our first priority, right? Yes. But sometimes, we you know, uh, we try to use our project or task as the motivation to play the game. For example, like, <laughs> ah, I have many tasks. I need to finish my task. And after, after that, I can play the game all the time. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that happens to me sometimes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. More questions we, before we close the meeting in a few minutes because we are going to continue to the lesson. Come on, one more. If there's no more, we are going to close this event. Okay, thank you so much, okay, everyone. Thank you, all, Bapa maybe. Ibu Guru from TMI. Thank you, students. Yeah, thank and you. <laughs> But Mr. Fikri, uh, before we close, I would like to take picture. Oh, Diki, we have Diki. Okay, one more time, Diki. Don't disappoint. Yes, okay, Diki. One more, Diki. Diki. I see. Don't be shy, now. Diki. Sorry. Last one. Okay. So I heard you that taking a fashion designer major at your college. So what is your experience like? Show fashion show or meet any famous model or anything? And what do you do at you taking the major? Okay, so I never met any fashion designer apart from Bali Asmara that was in Indonesia. And what I do here doing the fashion design most because we are studying fashion design. So, so far we are learning how to sew, how to design, how to make the pattern. We studied illustration. It is it's really fun if we like if we like it. It's really really fun. And talking about um, what I've done so far, I haven't done any fashion show yet because I just started the school. This is my second semester. So deciding what we want to study sometimes is really challenging because once you, for example, apply, you are accepted to make sure make sure that you. We don't wish we, we don't waste our time. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't met any fashion designers here. Yeah. Models, not really. But back in Indonesia, I went to lots of fashion show in Jakarta because I have some friends who work for magazines. So I I could just come to the fashion show and then just enjoy the time. Yeah. So Diki, uh, he has no experience in fashion design. So this a uh, new experience and something that he likes. So he wants to try it out. That's it, right? Thank you. Thank you uh, for Diki, the question, for the Diki. Uh, before we close this meeting, I would like to take picture together, guys. Show me your, uh, show me your face, your beautiful face and beautiful smile. We are going to take picture together with Mr. Fikri. Okay. And uh, the other teacher can also take the picture. I will count until uh, three because we have so many pages here. Wait, uh, around four pages. Okay, the first page, please uh, show me your camera. I will count until three. One, two, and three, smile. Okay, next page, second page. One one, two, and three smiles. The third page. One, 
two and three smiles the last page one two and three okay thank you very much for all students who have already attended this uh, event this fantastic friday event also thank you very much for mr fikri for your uh, nice sharing nice experience to motivate thank you, our thank students you, to study in, uh, in Sydney. hopefully we can see again later yes. after pandemic okay safe, bye bye everybody thank you thank you everyone okay you may to continue the for the next lesson and don't forget start with prayer when you uh religions oh okay That's please students don't leave <laughs> Ah, we hasn't we hasn't prayed yet, sir. Okay. Some announcement. Okay, so please close this activity with prayer. Uh, maybe for Muslim, still dress Muslim. Oh, there is Matthew also. Okay, Jofi. Okay. Langsung ke ya, bismillah. Auzu billahi minasy syaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin. Maliki yaumiddin. Ya Allah, 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 ya All